How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I wanted to give a few quick thoughts on NAB 2019. I had a fantastic time speaking with a bunch of different manufacturers and seeing how all their new products will help us as creatives in telling our stories. This new light looks amazing. It's apparently 20% brighter with a heap of ergonomic improvements. There's a handbrake style yoke. The controller has a built-in antenna with Wi-Fi and the light can dim all the way down to 1%. There's a clamp attachment that lets you mount the controller box directly to the stand, which is super convenient. And at a price point of $12.99, my interest is peaked. I'll probably be getting one of these lights as it releases. There's a new lighting modifier in town that basically looks like a Shamira pancake. I typically use the pancake with the 1K tungsten bulb, which is great for soft overhead omnidirectional lighting. However, this looks cool because it has the balance mount and you can attach it directly to your aperture lights for a daylight based omnidirectional light. I can also see myself getting one of these once I get a 300D Mark II. This little guy is making quite the splash in terms of RGB lights. It's comparable to a SkyPanel S30, includes HSI, and hundreds of Lee and Roscoe gels. Ted from Aperture claims that it has better color fidelity than a SkyPanel and I'm almost prepared to back that up. I took a few quick color readings at daylight and it is more spectrally similar to natural daylight at a golden hour than a sky panel is at the same color temp. That's impressive. This would also make a great gag light if you needed to dial in a really specific effect or when you need to start introducing color into your scene. This light also comes in at a really interesting price point of $1600 estimated and I'm really looking forward to doing more in-depth tests when it releases. There were also a couple of other really cool announcements at the show like the Mesh Network and Amarin MC lights but I didn't get to speak with reps about those specifically so do a quick YouTube search and you'll find plenty of info. EasyRig is launching a new flow arm that is their answer to Flow Cine Serene arm. It basically takes any excess movement caused by moving with the EasyRig. This is especially great for gimbal operators since it removes that bobbing that you usually see on gimbal work. This is also great for handheld work. I love using the EasyRig for a handheld movement but once you start walking with the EasyRig, all that movement is transferred into the line and gives a really aggressive handheld look which could be what you want but it's really hard to control. The flow arm eliminates this by smoothing out the turbulence on the line. I'm hoping to have EasyRig send one in so I can do another in-depth review of the new arm. Dude, it's nice. Innovative has yet another new car and I want it. The Voyager is essentially the Scout 2.0 and has so many welcome ergonomic improvements that make the user experience so much better. One of my favorite new features are the new pack latches that have moved to the short ends of the cart. The previous latches were fine but I would always forget to close them and they'd constantly bang up walls or doors. Another cool feature is the ability to add locks to the latches so you can lock the cart closed. The side posts are now symmetrical so accessories can be mounted on either side. There's no short end or long end and the top shelf can be ordered as an optional X top for use with laptops or keyboards. I would love to add the Voyager 30 to my kit for small quick shoots where I don't need to lug a ton of gear. As much as I love my OG Scout 42, it's sometimes difficult navigating through doorways and small hallways. That's a car. Damn. That's cool. Atomos has finally introduced an SDI module for one of my favorite monitors, the Ninja 5. I typically only use this monitor with my smaller A7 camera since it was HDMI only, but now this module now opens up this monitor for use on more professional bodies like my FS7. The module costs around 200 bucks, so this is a welcome upgrade to my existing monitor. They also debuted a new Shogun 7 monitor, which has a better display and the ability to live switch recordings, which I thought was pretty cool. This functionality is found on the bigger Sumo, but now is on the 7 inch monitor in case you'd ever need it. You can record up to four 1080p inputs along with the final output file of the switched recording. Tokina showed off their limited release Vista 1 Primes, which looked pretty killer. There are only going to be 60 sets in the world, so they'll be pretty rare. They have a single coating on the front element to give more flaring characteristics to the lens and the edges flare up like crazy and there's a very soft bloom to the highlights with the same clarity of the original Vista Primes. The set was created since a lot of DPs enjoyed shooting with vintage lenses but they didn't necessarily enjoy the softness that came with it. 
I'd love to give them a try if a project ever comes up that needs that specific look. These lenses are probably some of my favorite lenses to ever come out. They have such an interesting look to them and especially when you pair them with the Sony Venice. New to the show was the 135 and 21 and they both look spectacular. Zeiss calls part of this look gentle sharpness which gradually reduces sharpness from the focal plane. I'm totally in love with how these lenses react to people and skin tones and I also noticed that the bokeh has a more oval shape when shooting anything faster than a T2. I would love to try these sometime within the next year. I'm in the market for a motion control time lapse slider and I've had my eye on Syrup for about 5 years. Their Genie 2 and Pan Tilt units look really intuitive with the ability to add keyframes to your time lapses. The Genie 2 specifically is cool because it can be adapted to any slider and isn't restricted to a particular length. The unit basically pulls itself along a rope so you can set up a move for a few hundred feet if you wanted to. Syrup also makes a cable cam called the Slingshot that attaches their motion control products to a caddy that can extend up to 300 feet. This gives you motion time lapses from an aerial perspective which is totally mind blowing and the footage speaks for itself. A company I do a lot of work with just invested in a Syrup system so I will definitely be making a few videos on their products. Secudo's presence at NEB keeps getting smaller and smaller every year and that's not a fault of them, it's just really expensive to maintain a booth. Either way, I got my hands on one of their new EVFs, the Chameleon. The Chameleon is a neat little EVF that comes in a small form factor. It has an OLED display similar to the Gradical so I'm assuming it's still prone to burn in. My Gradical has the FS7 displays burned in which is a real bummer. The Chameleon looks like it doesn't include waveforms though and that's kind of a deal breaker for me. So I've been in talks with Sekonic for a little bit and we were finally able to link up at NAV. After producing that light meter video series, they were really interested in having me create some more content for them on some of their other meters. They actually loaned me one of their brand new C800 meters so I could try it out at the show. It was great learning about all the different color metrics like CRI, TLCI, TM30, and SSI. Once you dive into the color properties of light, you enter a world of science that most tend to not care about so much, so I'm currently working with Sekonic to help digest all of the technical information into easy to understand pieces so that you can make more calculated decisions for your own projects. What you getting there? Right, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> I will definitely be putting out more content on color metering specifically and even possibly doing a series similar to the light meter tutorials I put out late last year. Teradek and RT Motion have been working on integrating software and hardware with their new wireless lens control units. One of the neat new features is that you can do lens mapping right in the RT and even have that lens data displayed on any small HD monitor that has OS3. I've even seen a couple setups that featured Cinetape and had the distance from the subject displayed on screen with a lens mapping. That's super cool. Of course though, this stuff ain't cheap and will run you about 10 grand for a solid wireless follow focus package, but that's basically industry standard. I've been using Tentacles for a while now across all my cameras and happened to catch up with them at NAB. For those that don't know, Tentacles Sync is basically a time code generator that can inject time code into your cameras or audio recorders even if they don't have a time code input. Ever since I got them, I always use time code whenever I can and I've been meaning to do a video on them and how easy they are to use. They actually hooked me up with one of their new cold shoe brackets which pairs perfectly with my smaller A7 bodies. And that's about it. That's what I thought was interesting at NAB 2019. There's a lot of new stuff to check out and all of this stuff will help us as creatives to tell our stories and help push the boundaries on what's possible. It's not really about fangirling over gear just because it's shiny and new. It's about staying up to date and relevant with all the different tools available as visual storytellers. NAB is a great way to get your hands on new technology so you know what to look for when a specific job comes up. It's also great to talk face to face with manufacturers since you don't really get that with emails or phone calls. Also as a personal pet peeve of mine, I hate it when people call equipment toys. They're literally tools and you should treat them as such. My cinematography mentor called this widgetry, being fascinated with new technology for the sake of new technology. 
Anywho, if you found anything else at the show that you thought was interesting, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.